Good afternoon. It's Wednesday, the 18th of March. I'm Erin Viner, and this is IBA News, broadcasting from Jerusalem. Well, Israel went to sleep last night, believing that there was a virtual tie in the 2015 elections between Likud and the Zionist Union. But after an actual counting of the votes, a clear victory emerged for the Likud and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The counting of 99% of the ballots revealed that the center-right Likud won with 30 mandates, followed by the center-left Zionist Union of, Z of Isaac Herzog with only 24. The joint Arab list came in third with 13 seats or possibly 14. The centrist factions are next with 11 mandates garnered by Yair Lapid's Yeshatid and 10 going to Moshe Kahlon and his Kulanu party. The right-wing settler movement, Abayda UD, dropped to eight, while the ultra-Orthodox Shas and United Torah Judaism have seven and six seats, respectively. Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman's Israel Beitenu received six, while the left-wing merits came in with five or possibly four Knesset seats. Eli Shai's Yahad faction failed to pass the electoral threshold. And what's next now after the official election results are announced tomorrow night? Well, wheeling and dealing in the entire process of trying to form the next government. With a clear lead over the Zionist Union, Prime, Minister's Netan Prime Minister Netanyahu's Likud party is primed to do so. We get more from IBA's Ali Wogelenter. I am very happy tonight to see the great victory of the national camp, the great victory of Prime Minister Netanyahu. We fought very hard, but we won. The national camp will form the next government of Israel. And how right he is. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is holding all the cards this morning, as his clear-cut victory last night all but guarantees that he will be given the first opportunity to form the government he was looking for. The win also puts him on course to become the longest-serving leader in Israeli history. Last night, he reveled in the exit poll numbers even before the overnight count, gave Likud three more seats. Against all odds, a great victory for Likud, Abimi Netanyahu told cheering supporters, party headquarters in Tel Aviv, while the crowd chanted, he's a magician, he's a magician. Netanyahu said he had already spoken to leaders of other right-wing parties, urging them to join him in forming a strong and stable government without delay, because reality does not take a break. The citizens of Israel expect us to quickly put together a leadership that will work for them regarding security, economy, and society, as we committed to do, and we will do so. With exit polls last night showing a tie, Zionist Union leader Isaac Herzog sounded certain he would form the next government. But by this morning, Herzog said he had spoken with Netanyahu to congratulate him on his election victory and wish him luck. He added that his Zionist Union party would continue to be an alternative till he could, saying, I would like to make it clear to the Israeli people the challenges are the same challenges, the problems are the same problems, nothing has changed. Therefore, Tzipi Livni and I will continue leading the Zionist Union with force and pride and as an alternative in each and every aspect. Commentators say Netanyahu seems to have the easier path to forming a cabinet, and negotiations are already underway with the right-wing parties, beginning with Bayat UD, led by Naftali Bennett. While his party was weakened by its drop from 12 seats to 8, it still serves as Netanyahu's closest political ally and will likely obtain a top cabinet post. Foreign Minister and Yisrael Beitenu party head of Viktor Liebman, while also greatly diminished in seats from the last election, still holds power as a partner for Netanyahu. The Haredi parties also lost votes from its supporters, down from 18 to 13. UTJ and Shas are likely to endorse Netanyahu and sit inside his coalition. Shas leader Aryeh Derry has endorsed Netanyahu and wants to be in his coalition, while UTJ is not committed to either camp, but its antagonism to Yair Lapid, who will not be invited to join, makes the right wing much easier for them to join. The critical party for Netanyahu to get on his side will be Kulano, led by formerly Kud Minister Moshe Kahlon. His 10 seats make him a kingmaker, given his ability to side with either Netanyahu or the center-left opposition. If all of the above are in, Netanyahu has a coalition of 67 MKs. After the final results are announced tomorrow night, and following consultations with all political parties, President Ruben Rivlin will name the candidate he deems best placed to try to form a coalition. The nominee will then have up to 42 days to do so. While it is believed that Rivlin prefers a national unity government, Final results show that this was not the will of voters, and Labor and Likud are far too divided to entertain sitting in the same coalition government. Ellie Wogelanter, IBA News. As we just reported, the key of an 
a center-right and ultra-orthodox Netanyahu-led coalition is Moshe Kahlon and his Kulanu party. Without his former Likud minister, Netanyahu will be hard-pressed to reach the necessary 61-seat majority. Kahlon is now positioned as a kingmaker and able to dictate the terms for his joining the next government, including an appointment as the nation's next finance minister. The government will have many, many members and they will each pull in a different uh, direction and managing it will be uh, much more complex for Netanyahu than um, uh, today's celebrations uh, suggest. And I think that um, um, he is compelled to appoint um, Moshe Kahlon, his former protege and current rival, as finance minister and will therefore uh, find uh, the government that he's about to assemble much less solid than uh, people initially presume. Jerusalem Post political analyst Gil Hoffman said that he believes that Prime Minister Netanyahu's dramatic win will give rise to the quick formation of a coalition government. And he told IBA's Ari O'Sullivan that he believes that this decisive victory makes so-called political kingmakers irrelevant. After such a convincing victory in Tuesday's election, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will honor his promise and form a right-wing government. He will no longer be under pressure to form a national unity government like he would have been had the race been closer. Um, I don't see any other possibility right now. But, you know, people are saying that the president himself is going to be pushing for a sort of a coalition government. Even last night, the president's associates were telling me that if Netanyahu had a right-wing government with Kahlon in hand, there was little he could do to prevent it. So in retrospect, we say it was a good move or a bad move for Netanyahu to call these early elections. In retrospect, Netanyahu could have governed till 2017 with the, with the coalition he had, and that would have been a good move. In retrospect, calling the election and getting another four years was also a good move. So is that what he accomplished? He got another four years? Yes. Netanyahu has another four years in power. He will outlast Barack Obama as president of the United States. And he can say that he got elected to four terms. So it's like very impressive. He'll be, he'll, beat, uh, he'll be in power longer than Ben-Gurion. Wow. So tell me, um, who are going to be the kingmakers this time? The notion of a kingmaker is out of date in an election in which Netanyahu won such a convincing victory. One can say Moshe Kahlon is a kingmaker because he has 10 seats, but really? Um, Netanyahu's in charge. Okay, so if we're looking at this right-wing coalition government, uh, are we going to see Shas and Aguda and other parasitic type parties taking money from the government, getting rid of all the, uh, the obligation to do national service? Shas and United Torah Judaism will do as they see fit to serve their constituency. And from, for them, that means trying to bring as much government funding to them as any other constituency would try to receive from any government anywhere in the world. And if it, now, when it comes to IDF service, a lot of the steps that were taken are impossible to revoke. What about the opposition? What's going to happen with them? With Herzog? Isaac Herzog proved himself as a leader in this election. If in the final result he won 24 seats, that is very impressive for the leader of the center-left. When there are polls that say that the people in Israel who identify themselves as left-wing are, are it's only 3%. Uh, he united the center-left in an impressive way. He has a bright future ahead of him. What about merits? It seems to have collapsed. Meretz has no reason to exist anymore. Meretz was taking votes away from the man who could bring Netanyahu down. Um, and so Zahava Galon is apparently quitting the leader of Meretz. Perhaps the rest of the party should follow suit and either quit or join labor. And then we have Yeh Shatid and Yeh Lapid. He's still a force to be reckoned with, no? Yair Lapid proved that his party exists, will continue to exist, uh, will present an alternative uh, for young people in this country. And, uh, you know, over the next few years, if he presents a better alternative uh, than Herzog, uh, he could become a leader in this country. Joining me now in the studio to discuss the election results is Hebrew University political science professor Avram Diskin. Thank you for coming in this evening. Thank you for inviting me. Do you agree with those who say that it's a foregone conclusion that Netanyahu will put together a narrow, right-wing, ultra-Orthodox coalition of 67 members? 
I really cannot see any other alternative. You know, the only other alternative that I can see is even a narrower government without uh, Lieberman. You know, Lieberman uh, could have been a troublemaker had he had the power uh, to cool that uh, cabinet down. But uh, there are 61. This despite the fact that Shas was down four seats from the previous elections. The ultra-religious Ashkenazi United Torah Judaism party received six seats, one less than the previous government. This due to a bitter divide within the Ashkenazi Haredi community that resulted in a de facto boycott by rebel rabbi Shmuel Obach. Already yesterday, Yaakov Litzman said he would enter coalition negotiations with the aim of rolling back some of the destructive rulings made by the previous government. Israel Beitenu of Igdor Lieberman's party were left with a mere one-digit number of six, compared to 11 in the previous elections when they ran with the Likud. Party activists were quick to blame the police investigation against a number of party officials as the reason for the downfall. A day after Merritt's belly scraped through with four seats, Chairwoman Zahava Galon announced she would step down and hand the reins over to Knesset member Tamar Zandberg. Shas runaway Eli Shai's Yachad party just barely fell to cross the 3.25% threshold, causing nearly four mandates to be wasted. With final results expected to be published on Thursday by the Central Election Committee, we may see very slight changes in the count of mandates. Mogo Dubkevich, IBA News. Based on the recent tensions between Prime Minister Netanyahu and U.S. President Barack Obama, one might have thought that the White House could be asking for a recount. But instead, the Obama administration issued a statement saying that Washington is looking forward to working closely with the next Israeli government. The president has no doubt that the strong ties between the United States and Israel will endure, will endure far, belong, far beyond uh, this election. Uh, and that has been true for generations now, uh, that the uh, U.S.-Israel relationship is not one that has been subject historically to, uh, to partisanship and not one that has been subject to uh, intense partisan political debate, uh, but rather because of our um, deep cultural ties, because of the deep ties between our people, because of our shared interests when it comes to uh, national security in the Middle East, uh, that, the, that the strong relationship between the United States and Israel uh, will endure far, be, far beyond this uh, upcoming election or the election that's being held today. Palestinian negotiator Saeed Barakat says that the Israeli people have chosen the continued occupation over peace talks and that Prime Minister Netanyahu should be held accountable for his aggressive policies. Well, I think the results of the Israeli elections indicate uh, business as usual. Uh, it seems to me that uh, uh, Mr. Netanyahu uh, will form the next government in Israel. And we all heard what he said yesterday. He said if he is re elected as a prime minister in Israel, Mr. Netanyahu said he will not allow a Palestinian state. And I believe now it's up to the international community to stop treating this prime minister as a prime minister as above the laws of man and he should be held accountable and he should the international community should not cover him or give him impunity impunity will mean more conflict more complexities and it will not make peace justice will make peace here in jerusalem voters had mixed feelings over the election results while some were delighted others say that they now want to leave the country IBA's Ari O'Sullivan hit the streets to ask residents for their thoughts. We're here on Gaza Road in Jerusalem, and a little bit over here to the left is the Prime Minister's residence. And after the stunning victory last night, his comeback from behind victory, it looks like the Prime Minister and his wife Sarah will be in this house for another four years. I, I don't think I really knew who to vote. I didn't really feel I, there is somebody I really, um, in, a whole, in my whole heart, I thought is... So you're not immensely disappointed like many people in this country? Uh, no, I'm not disappointed, actually. Are you very happy? No. Okay. No, no, no. Really, really disappointed. 
Um, nothing else to say, really. No, there is no real hope. All our community, all our friends here in the university just start to discuss the possibility of leaving Israel. We start to we realize it was tough. We start to have some hope in the in the end. Everybody was talking about the change that's going to happen. Everybody is tired of Bibi. But Bibi, the king of Israel. I think he's done a very good job dancing around the president and the Europeans for the last six years. So I think that he can continue to do that until we get rid of Obama. I'm happy that Bibi is going to be in charge of the country. I know some people are upset because they want to change, but I think that this is the best for the country. Um, and I think that we need somebody who's strong on the right, who's not going to negotiate with terrorists. Some people are telling us that they're so upset they're going to leave the country. What do you think about that? I, I, I really think that's ridiculous. I think this is a Jewish country and um, all Jews should live here. It's an amazing country. I recently made Aliyah and I'm so happy. I, I really love this country, so I think people should stay. Taking a look at local finance and the shekel today put in a mixed performance while share prices on the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange were up across the board. Here's a look at the afternoon numbers. Fortunately, the beautiful weather helped to accommodate the 72% voter turnout at the polling booths, but now we're headed for slightly more wintry conditions. The IBA weather team tells us that we can expect mostly cloudy skies and a significant drop in temperatures tomorrow, accompanied by scattered rain showers in the north. Here's a look at the forecast at home and abroad over the next 24 hours. Yes. Thank you for being with us this afternoon. If you missed the excitement of our live coverage of the 2015 elections late last night, it's not too late to see our special program on our IBA News Facebook page. I'll be back tomorrow to bring you the latest breaking news from Israel. We now leave you with images of Prime Minister Netanyahu making a pilgrimage to the Western Wall in the capital's old city a short time ago to give thanks for his election victory. I'm Aaron Viner wishing you a great evening and shalom from Jerusalem.